Welcome CSE 103 class to Polygon Random, where we'll be making random polygons with our turtle module in our Python language using Trinket. I didn't mention that in the last video, and I also didn't mention creating a new Trinket, but we're actually going to be duplicating a Trinket in this one. This is a finished product, so I'll show you this first, and basically what's going to happen here is we're going to run it, and it's going to make random polygons. No input required, and it's also going to tell us what kind it is, and it's going to do random colors, random shapes, and then it should tell us the name of what it is since, since sometimes it's hard to kind of count the sides and know what it is. So this is an octagon and it's green, so everything's random. Now it's just making a blue one, and that happens to be a nonagon with nine sides. So we're going to do that, and what we're going to use, if you look at the code here, we have things called lists in Python. So we have, and they're real simple, it's just you put colors and then use these square brackets and you just, you just type things out and you put them in brackets. Now we're going to try to stick with eight. So there'll be eight colors and eight types of polygons that we're going to use. And just keep in mind when we use lists, they actually start at the number zero. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the length of our list is eight, but they actually start with index number zero and go to seven. That's why you'll see numbers like zero and seven here. And this is 3 to 10 because that's sides. We're going to work with a triangle through a decagon. So that's what we're going to do here. And we don't have to start this from scratch. We'll be able to use what we already have. So you're going to be able to go to your, you're going to be able to go back to this one that you just did. And I'll save the last thing I did on my 15 polygon. And hopefully you did that one first. And what you're going to do on this one, and here's instructions for this one. And it's called assignment 16 for this semester. And we're going to do everything that we did, except we're going to add one more import in here. Instead of just import turtle, we're going to do import random, because we're going to have to generate a random number. And we're going to move the input prompts that we did on our last exercise. But a lot of the function we could keep already, and we're just going to add some lists. And it's going to involve a little bit of typing, but I'll, one, I'll give you some, some hints to make it quicker, because you could just type things with commas and then put the quotes in afterwards. So I'll show you how to do that. And we'll start with polygon random. So let me get back to this one. And again, we're going to do, you can duplicate this one. So we'll duplicate this one and then I'll just give it a new name and I'll call it 16. I'll call it polygon random because we're making random polygons. We're not inputting anything and I'll save that. So we're going to use what we have here. First thing we're going to do is add a second import because we're going to import the random module so that we could create random numbers. And we're going to use random numbers to substitute for colors and sides and all that kind of stuff. And then also for our variables here, we'll start off and we'll just put these back as regular numbers. So sides, I'll just put it back at what they were and get rid of these inputs that we did. I'll leave the angle here because we're going to use that same formula. And then color, I'll just use, I'll just use red to start. So I'll put that back the way we started the other one. And we're going to keep our same function. Everything in the function should be the same. And then we're also going to call the function. So everything is, is OK so far, except we're going to create some random numbers. First thing we're going to do is create a random number of sides so that we can kind of create this with a random number of sides. We're not going to do a random size, just sides. So they could be various types. So this is going to have to change. This random sides is going to have to change to that. So we're going to have to create a random number that goes between 3 and 10. And we don't have to write any kind of list to do that. We can just make a range of a random number. So what we're going to do is create a random number, and we're going to use a variable to represent that. So I'm going to go before this variable, and I'll call it ran. Now you could call it ran and put something else. I'm going to call it ran sides, because this is going to be specifically for the number of sides. So it's going to be a random number, and it's basically going to be equal to, and we're going to use kind of a, a little kind of method here that does random.randint. And you'll see it come up here. And then in here, it's looking for kind of the starting and ending number. So I'll put parentheses here, and our starting number is going to be 3, because we want a 3 sides. We're talking about sides here. It's either going to be 3 sides, or it's going to be 10. So it's going to be a random number between 3 and 10. And that's what we want. And then we're going to use that random number for sides. And then in here, we could just use ran sides. We could just kind of substitute that in there as another variable. So we created a variable ran sides, which is going to get a number, 3, 4, 5, whatever. And then we're going to use that for sides so that it takes whatever sides, whatever number comes up, like a 7, it's going to do 360 divided by 7, and then output that. So, And if you wanted to see what's happening, one thing you can do here at some point is just uh, see what's coming out. I'm just going to use this print function. This is a built-in function in Python. I'm just going to print, 
and I'm just going to put ran sides. And I can see I have an error already. I have, I have rands there. So make sure, make sure this is the same as that. So I'm just going to print out ran sides right now. And I could even, I can even uh, comment out running my function. I could just run this and I'm missing something. I see what it is, but I'm missing a D in there. It should say invalid has no, it doesn't know what that is because I spelled it wrong. So I have to put rand in there and there it is rand int. Now it put it again when I clicked on that. So it should be rand int random dot rand. It's from the random module and it's the rand int that is kind of using it only an integer. It's not using any decimals. So that's what I want. So let me just run this again and it's saying 10. I'll run it again, three, five, and I could keep running it just to see that it's generating. Now th this doesn't really doing anything. This is just showing by using this print, it's just showing me what number is being generated. I'm not doing anything with it yet. Okay, so I'm just checking it out and making sure that it works. And I, I could leave it down here. There's nothing wrong with having this print here. But now I'm going to open up my function again so it actually draws the shape. And what should happen is the sides now is being using the ran sides. So when it uses sides down here, it should use that random random number of sides. So it should be creating that and it's also using sides when it makes the angle. So everything should work out. So let's try this out. And that's 10 sided. That's a decagon. I only know that because I see the 10 down here. And there should be a stop sign shape, an octagon. And they're red each time because we only we already specified a red color. And there's an octagon again. And remember it's random so there'll be ones that go in a row. There's seven and so on. So that's working. So we're making our random polygons. So we're almost done as far as what we're doing here, but we are gonna make random colors. And then we also are gonna kind of indicate what kind of shape it is. So we're gonna have to do that too. So we're gonna make random colors. So we're gonna create what's called a list. And in some languages, they call them an array. We're gonna call them, uh, Python calls it a list. And it's just gonna be a, a number of names. And we're just gonna put in some random colors. So I'm gonna make a list up here and I'll put it first and I'll just call it colors. And it's like a variable, so you put equals and then you just start it with square brackets and it puts the pair of brackets there. Now here's a little trick. I'm gonna type these colors in here and I'm gonna just put commas. I'm not gonna put the quotes. So I'm just gonna do red, comma, green. I'll start with RGB first and then I'll just use like cyan, like maroon and teal. And I wanna make sure I have eight. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. Now it's looking for strings. Right now it doesn't have strings. That's why it's highlighting them like that. So I want to put quotes on here. Instead of having to put quotes around every one, what you could do is you could double click. And then if you're on Windows, hold Control. If you're on Mac, hold Command. And then hold hold that key down, either Control or Command, and double click again. And just double click on every, every one so they all get highlighted. And then you could just do Shift Quote or Shift Double Quote. And it should put quotes around all of them. And that's a lot easier than trying to put the quotes as you go. And what I'm also going to do here is after the one comma, I'm going to do a shift enter or shift return just to kind of break the line so it's not going out so far. So I don't have to worry about that. So now I have a list of colors and I have a list of eight colors that I'm using here. And I actually want to make random colors show up here. So now how am I going to do that? I actually have to, these numbers go from zero. Index color is like, just to give you an example here, it, for color, instead of using red, I could use colors. And then in brackets, I could say three. Now, what color would that be? Zero, one, two, three. It should make a cyan because that's the third index. Zero, one, two, three. It should make a cyan by specifying that my color is basically the third index from the colors list. That's what it's really saying, the third index from the colors list. So if I run this, it should make a cyan, whatever, a cyan 10 decagon, I guess. So it's using, so that's how that works. That's how you specify a color. If I wanted to choose two, it would be blue. And there's a, there's a blue, whatever, nanagon. And if I wanted, the last one is seven. So if I put seven in here, it's going to make a teal and it happened to make a triangle. Now, by the way, if I made an eight, if I, if I screwed up and I put eight in here, you're going to get an error and saying out of index range. So it's, it's, it, it knows in here that there's no index eight. So you're going to get an error. So just be careful of that. So we're going to make random numbers from zero 
through 7 because those are the index numbers here. So we're going to make another random number and we're, we're not going to use the same one because then it wouldn't be random as we're making with this. So what I could do here is I could copy this statement and I'll call it random color. I'll just do CLR ran color and I could use the same statement here except I'm going to do this one 0 and 7 because that's our range because we're going to go index 0 through 7 and it should pick out a random number and then for colors you might say well here we only chose one color we used you know I, I didn't mean to have set you know 8 there but but if you choose one it's only going to use one but if you use colors and then you put the random number in here if I put ran color in there what this means is this ran color means whatever random number between 0 and 7 so it's almost the same thing as putting a number in here except it's going to be random and if I want to I could even do another print right below here and just put ran I guess I could put ran color CLR and what that should do is just really um, give me a number it should show me what number it is so let's just try that out I'll save this and I'll run it and I got a 9 and a 1 so what does that mean it means I got nine sides so it's a nanagon and one means it's using index one which is actually green so that's what that's where it got the random so it's not using the same number that's why we're making two separate randoms so I'll run it again and now it's using yellow which is five so zero one two three four five so it's using the fifth index yellow now so that's what it's doing down there so and it made eight sides like a octagon so that's working so far so so that's working okay so we now have our random colors that are being displayed here so and again you can keep these here or you don't have to keep them you could comment them out it's only for your testing purposes so you could comment them out or you could delete them if, if they bother you know if they bother you if they just get in your way there it just makes too much code so again what we did here is we had our four original variables we made one list of colors and then we generated two random numbers one just between 0 and 7 just numbers this one is, is a random number of sides between 3 and 10 that's how we generated our different shapes or random shapes and then this one we made a random number between 0 through 7 so it can actually pull colors from here being 0 1 2 3 and so on so that's how we came up with our random colors and also we're gonna make one more list and we're gonna generate the name down below but let me take a break and we'll do that as part two